So why is Africa suffering? The issue of the nexus between democracy and development is an important discussion. it differently than to say as long we have elections were transparent. Even the APR will focus on the political, but there's, remember there's also economic capital. The Portal Union African Development Plan book is a serial element. The Portal Union African Nepopa has a role in the role of leadership that we can have to have a role in our functioning of our program des ressources venant de l'Union européenne du dehors de Ce n'est pas sérieux. Et ça, nous, ça fait qu'il il est limité dans ce qu'il peut faire. Il devrait tout développer des mécanismes qui permettent justement à ce qu'il soit financé principalement par des ressources africaines. C'est ça qui lui donnera l'autorité et l'autonomie pour pouvoir intervenir efficacement à tous les niveaux. We have started the process at the African Union of reforms. And in, at, at the heart of these reforms that are still ongoing, the, 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 the focus, or, or, or rather the consensus emerged that let's not do too much with less resources. And I think what was agreed was to focus on four or five key priorities of continental significance. I'll, I'll, I'll list them for you. The, the priorities was as, are as follows now. Democracy and governance, yeah, to ensure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, 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 the kind of governments we have are democratically elected and also they follow, you know, a, 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 a good governance principles. Two, peace and security, to ensure that there's the, the content is peaceful and stable. Three, uh, uh, it was uh, socio-economic development uh, to, to ensure that the integration that we strive towards also benefits uh, all and sundry. Nobody is left behind. So the, in particular, ordinary citizens. Finally, it was the issue of uh, positioning Africa globally uh, such so that it plays its uh, uh, rightful role in the, in, the, in, the, in the global arena and that uh, the African image is also uh, uh, enhanced on the, global, on, the, on the global scene. Africa is a potpourri. You find democracies, quasi-democracies, very weak. You find monarchs in the African Union. You find full-blown dictatorship also as member states of uh, the, the African Union. So we do not have, uh, almost 22 years after the AU, we do not even have a common foreign policy approach as Africa. We must, we must at all times promote inclusive development, like I said earlier. Um, let me use one instrument of the African Union, the Africa Peer Review Mechanism. This is one instrument, in my view, that is so fundamental in development planning of the member states. Why? The APRM can go to a country, speak to everyone. How do you see your country? How is it work in terms of the economic development, uh, socioeconomic development, political arrangement? How is it working? And they speak to all classes of people. And then you are able to say, okay, these are the challenges we have. Because the poor person has spoken, the rich person has spoken, the middle class people, they have spoken, and so we can agree these are the issues that we need to deal with. And so when you put your plans together because of the information you have generated from speaking to everyone, then you can ensure that the voices and the needs of the poorest of the poor are included in your plan.
What we have seen over the decades in Africa is this disconnection between the civil society, between academics and government officials. So it is our intent that the, the, this symposium will be able to bridge that gap. Uh, and just as we are also trying to introduce some of those, uh, those maybe, maybe forgotten discourse into contemporary discourse about African development, African democratic uh, consolidation are uh, all different kinds of issues like pan-africanism nobody is reading about pan-africanism any longer students are not even researching that as one of the topics for their postgraduate studies as if the idea of pan-africanism is dead but without this binding force uniting africa together towards a common goal to be exceedingly difficult particularly for those smaller countries uh, to develop because they may be unable to galvanize their resources together and make an impact particularly not within the common the, the, the continent but even uh, across the world across the world so it is the intention of the institute that when we st start uh, running the, the, the african union studies in different formats so means a short learning program we also have this idea of developing it into a postgraduate uh, disciplines where people will be registered to do their masters in african union studies to doctoral studies on the working modalities of the African Union. And the intention is to be able to strengthen the capacity of the African Union and, and, and engage in human capacity building uh, so that the, 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 the delivery of the African Union will be different because we will have trained people that understand the philosophical foundation of the African Union, the working modalities of the African Union, and the challenges confronting Africa, particularly at this point. In time. I think that uh, institutes such as ourselves, the Institute for Pan-African Thought and Conversation and the Institute for Global African Affairs, Trust Africa, uh, and many other institutions that are here, all the universities on the continent, research institutes, and NGOs, have a great role to play in working together with intergovernmental institutions such as the African Union and regional economic communities in order to first check whether the policies and policy frameworks that we have right now are still fit for purpose, whether they are still implementable in the nature that they are, and whether they can produce the outcomes that we are looking for. There is no harm in revisiting the decisions of yesterday, if only it is to make sure that we accelerate progress going forward. I also think that in the process of doing so, we must be mindful of those elements of these policies that are foreign imports to us and have nothing to do with our, our challenges. I also think that the regional organizations and the African Union needs to allow themselves an opportunity to benefit from uh, researchers uh, on the continent in terms of looking at why are certain policies implemented slower than others? Why there's so little movement in relation to the protocol on the movement of goods and services and people, for example. Why there is some limited uh, uh, progress in relation to the infrastructure and road um, uh, uh, connections and logistics uh, decisions of the African Union and all of that. Why there is so little uh, progress in relation to water pools, energy pools in each of the region so that we can identify the stumbling block, deal with them, so that the continent can faster uh, achieve all the great dreams that Africa has long uh, pursued. You, you can't projectize the development of Africa. It can't be by project. It has to be coming from within the African people to say, this is where we are going. This is how we want to get there. And these are our investments so that we invest in our own development process. For now, everything, people, not everything, but most of the funding comes from development partners. Yet we say we want to be free. How does it happen that a continent which is so-called the richest in the world, its people are the poorest, instead of adding value, to our own minerals, we invite other people in the name of FDI, uh, Foreign Direct Investment, to say, come and mine our minerals. 
they mine the minerals, they sell the minerals. Then we go to London, we go to Beijing, we go to Moscow to say, please give us money for our development. How does that make sense? Psychologically, how does it make sense? So until we change our psychology, our behavior, our identity in terms of who we want to be, yes, history has been painful, but we have to move forward. But we can't continue with the same practices of laying our aspiration in the hands of other people and expect it not to be economic colonialism. Political is finished, but now we've entered the economic. How do we get out of it? Thank you.